All right, I want to go through the steps of creating our first animation in After Effects, the clock face, the clock swinging on a pendulum animation. Clocks, of course, have to do with time. Um, it's kind of a cliche to work with a clock in the animation, but it, uh, just consider it to be thematic. To get started, I don't have a composition defined. I am going to create compositions based on the Photoshop files that I created. To do that, I'm going to right click in the project panel and select import file. See that there's two Photoshop files, one called clock, the other clock face. I'm going to start with one called clock face. When I select the Photoshop file, I can import it as footage, which means that it will just be a flattened image. Or if I want to work with all the layers, I want to bring it in as a composition or composition retain layer sizes. So you get an idea what the difference between these two are. I'm going to bring in clock face as a composition and the file clock as a composition retain layer sizes. I set up these two files uh, just so that they would uh, work that way. So I'm going to select composition and click open. Again I have the option to select what kind of import I'm doing. I want the layer styles to be editable. Now I do have layer styles on this. I put a bevel emboss on uh, many of the layers on the clock face, so having them be editable uh, will turn out to be useful. So here we have a composition. We also have a folder with the individual layers available to us. If I double click on clock face, which is an 800 by 800 pixel image. It'll open it in the composition panel and it will show us a timeline here. Now looking at the storyboard, I see that I designed it to be a 20 second long composition and this is showing 30 seconds. That is just what it defaulted to. Since these are all just layers in the still image file, after Effects went with the default length or the length of the last composition that was created. If I go into the composition menu and look at the settings, I'm going to go ahead and change that to 20 seconds. I'm working with the full resolution of the Photoshop file and I'm working with the NTSC frame rate of 29.97. So full full frame rate. I'm going to click OK. Now my Photoshop file had transparent layers and the composition settings we were just looking at had black selected to be the background color. That can be any color I want. It basically is what's transparent in this composition. If I drag through the timeline there's no animation currently. That's what I want to do now. I want to animate my minute hand and my hour hand. The ticks and clock face are just going to be sitting there. I don't need to see uh, these guides that came over from Photoshop, but uh, we'll, we'll keep them there for now. If I go in here, I can turn those on and off. But they will help show the what's happening around the center of the image. One of the main differences between composition and composition retain layer sizes is how the layers are cropped and where the anchor point is placed. If I select the minute hand you see that the center of rotation the anchor point is right in the center of the of the composition. And this makes sense. If 
for our composition, but notice that what I'm rotating is the size of the whole composition. Even though the minute hand only takes up a, uh, a small part of the screen, I'm treating it as if it fills the whole frame. That means that the center of the layer called minute is in the center of the composition. That makes it easy for us to animate this the way we want, where it's rotating around a point that happens to be the center of the screen, but it's not the center of the minute hand itself. Change that back to zero. Okay, so the first thing I want to animate is actually the hour hand. So I'm going to select the hour hand, and I am going to type the letter R to open up its rotation, and I want to turn on animation for that. First, before I do that, I want to make sure I'm at the beginning of the timeline at zero seconds, zero frames, and click on the stopwatch. When I click on the stopwatch, it turns on animation and creates a keyframe at the current time, which is zero. Now the hour hand in this animation is going to go all the way around one time. So I'm, to create the keyframe at the end, I'm going to go to the end of the timeline, and I am going to change the rotation. Now I could go all the way around to 360. Notice that when I get to 360, it goes back to zero and adds a one here. So this one is for one complete revolution. The shortcut then is to go in and just type a one. And I know I have a keyframe here that is one complete revolution around. And as I drag through the timeline, I see indeed the hour hand going around one complete turn. Similarly with the minute hand, it needs to go around all the way around once for each hour. There are 12 hours, so it needs to go around 12 times. I'm going to turn on animation at time zero. I get a keyframe at time zero. I go all the way to the end, and I'm going to type in 12. Now if I hit the space bar, you'll see that I have an animation where the minute hand makes a complete revolution for each hour. And in the, our 20 second timeline, the hour hand makes a complete rotation around the clock. If I hit the spacebar again and pause, I want to point out that the bevel and emboss is animating essentially because it's applied as an effect the direction of the lighting is creating appropriate shading for each each frame so we have fairly re realistic shading throughout the animation